All right, what do we have today? We have the Heathen Dog Tabletop RPG Fundamentals. And I'm not going to try to step on Garthon's stuff by doing an amazing intro, because if I do it for myself, I just look like a D-bag, so I'm not going to do it. Now, and I'm thinking if I can come up with one, but Garthon has set the bar so I know, it's so high. One. There's there's no I'm getting around gonna it. I going to say, and here's a dude talking about stuff. Have at it. <laughs> Garthon says do it. I just did it. There it I is. Dude talking about stuff. Efficiency. That's awesome. All right. Now, Stars Without Number. Role-playing game, obviously. Came out in 2010. Revised in 2017, which is the, uh, the edition I am reviewing right now published by kevin crawford you can get it at drive through rpg for 19.99 the pdf now or you can get the pdf version that i am reviewing the free one for free yay now the the free version is missing a couple of a couple of uh uh abilities and classes and stuff like that but you don't really need it to play and enjoy the game which i hope that i have uh beat into you by now with with uh with uh, the uh two previous uh, iterations of this segment. One was the introduction to the lore, and the other was the introduction to the system of the game, so you know how it's played. And uh, if you're lucky and you're watching on YouTube, above Duncan's head, you, you will be able to see a card linking you to one, two, or, you know, both of those, of those things. Now, you can get a hardcover if you want. You really want it. You can get it. But it'll cost you 60 bucks. That's just the way that's the way games are today. That's how it is. Is it worth it? I think so. It's a pretty good game. But I'll let you decide that. Now, character creation. Name of the game today. We are building your hero. And this is how we're going to do it. First, we're going to roll our attributes. Okay, it's going to be a 3d6 down the line, OSR style, or you can use some predetermined attributes. Don't worry, we'll get into that. Backgrounds. This is what you did before the game. How you grew up. Were, were you a fry cook? Were you a clerk? Were you a soldier? Were you a technician? Were you a priest? Hey, you know what? Let's find out. And then your class. This is, this is what you are in the game now. And we have warrior, expert, psychic, and adventurer. The warrior, obviously, straight up fighting. The expert is, uh, I'd say, a support class, but really, really good at something. All right? Either good at flying, good, good at uh, fixing, good at doctoring, good at something. Really good. And then there's the psychic. These are the people who, who uh, were gifted or cursed, depending on how you look at it, with psychic abilities. And then the adventurer. The adventurer is the jack of all trades. He, could, he takes a little bit of everyone else's shtick and makes it his own. All right? So that's pretty fun. Now, also there's foci. These are the things that... Uh, uh, br t bring you. I don't know how to how to call it. Uh, uniqueness, I guess, from all the other warriors or experts or psychics or whatever. This is something uh, a talent or a knack that only you can do. Not not so much every warrior or every psychic, but you. Would you and call it, it a specialization? That eh, it doesn't have to be attached to your class though. Mm. Like I said, it's you. Like you can be. Uh, a, uh, a medical doctor, a great medical doctor, but you also happen to be able to juggle really well. Seriously, you can take juggling as your foci. You could do it. It's fine. It's we all flavor. And then, of course, we're going to equip us up. You know, everyone needs bullets and beans, so we're going to get some too. And then, of course, the finishing touches. Saving throws, back background story, the goals of your character, all that stuff. After that's done, your character is also done, and you can start playing the game. Let's go to step one. Rolling attributes. All right. Now, you get to choose. All right. The game gives you a choice. You can roll 3d6 and go top to bottom, down the line. Strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. Bam. There's your character. It gives you an out. If you roll a really bad stat or a stat you don't like, or you had an idea in mind you wanted to be a warrior, but your strength or con or whatever that you needed is a little low, you can replace any one stat with a 14 if you rolled conversely if you don't want to roll you can take the predetermined stats which are listed below 14 12 11 10 9 7 that gives you one stat with a plus one bonus one stat with a minus one and all the other stats 
in the average range. It gives you a well-rounded character right out of the bat. You don't have to worry about rolling bad. Okay. Now, uh, you're going to want to note the attribute modifiers. They're going to they're going to come uh, become important later on. But you know what? I'm going to roll. Okay, so I rolled my stats. I rolled top to bottom, 3d6, added up, listed them off. All right? And my very first roll was triple one. No joke. Triple one. Strength, three. It's not great, but you look at all my other stats. I have one that's a plus one. The rest of them are in average range. This isn't bad. I get a free 14, remember? I can replace that 14... I can place that 14 in strength, replacing the three, and I got I got two bonuses and no minuses. I'm gold, right? Right? Uh, I think you should take the three. And oh, roll. you know what I did? I took the three. That's what yeah. I did. <laughs> you know why? Because it's the worst stat in the game, but it only gives you a minus two. That's it. Worst stat in the game. Gives you minus two. You know what? I'm taking it. I'm taking yeah. it for flavor. I'm going to run with this and see what happens. Did you put the 14 somewhere else? I put the 14 in red. It's in intelligence. My okay. intelligence was already 10. Yeah, it was already 10. I just made it 14. I figure, you know what? If I'm super weak like that, I'm going to need to be smart. I'm going to need to be smart to, to get by. So I put it in intelligence. There we go. Distinguishment. Oh, yeah. Pub rules. I don't know about that. Okay. Keep the three. That's exactly what I'm doing. Keeping yep. the three. Now, moving on from our stats, because I kept the three and there's no turning back ever forward, we go to my background. Everyone's got a past. Your character has one too. Whether it's good or bad, we don't know. Your background is what you did or were before your adventuring career. And you look on this list. We got barbarian, criminal, merchant, peasant, pilot, soldier, spacer, technician, worker. You get to choose or you get to roll. What am I going to do? I'm going to roll. Of course I'm going to roll. I mean, what could I roll? All right. What's good? Three. Three, a courtesan. That's right. I could be a gigolo. <laughs> and if I roll gigolo, I'm definitely going to name myself Deuce. <laughs> definitely. That's what's happening. That's happening. Or I could be a noble or an official or a dirty peasant that, that got out of, of the of the noble peasant game. Man, I escaped. Right? Could be a lot of stuff. Duncan, I want you to look at this list. And for me, for my character as he stands... What would you think would be the worst two or three backgrounds uh, for me? For the l- terrible strength, uh, yes. let's go with barbarian, soldier, and then thug. You know what? You're a smart man. I rolled. I rolled soldier. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's awkward. Uh, I'm pushing yep. through. I'm pushing through. Now, I'm not so much a soldier as a conscript because no standing military that is not drafting or stealing folk is going to want me. So would soldier include the officer class? Uh, no, because there is an officer background. Okay. So Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, there is no officer background. There, there is only, I could have been an officer. You're right. I could have been an officer, but I didn't go that route because they wouldn't let him in. He doesn't meet the minimum strength lifting requirement to be in an actual standing military so he was conscripted uh the 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 planet was uh was in a war with another planet wasn't going well they had a draft they call it a draft but it was really just no you come or we kill your family oh okay and so i went but uh what do i get i get a free skill a free combat skill i chose shoot which is just range combat okay figure i don't want to get up and close because then my strength comes into play, and that means I die. But so, you also can have, at that point, negotiating skills may come into play. That's true. I went another way. Let me show you here. Mm-hmm. Now, I have three choices to go forward. Okay, I can choose the quick skills, which are which are below Duncan. Uh, any combat, an exert skill, and survive skill. That doesn't seem like my bag, right? Doesn't seem like my bag. Or I can choose two skills from the learning list any two i want administer 
Any combat, exert, fix, lead, notice, sneak, and survive. If I took lead, I might be able to, you know, segue into officer class, right? Mm-hmm. And then if, if, if I took administer, that's like, a, that's like an administrator, then boom, I could solidify my officer. But no, again, I went another way. Because the third option is you can roll three times, divided any way you like between the growth table and the learning table. Hmm. So, what do you think I did? I think you did that. I think I rolled too. Yes, I rolled. What I get? Plus two physical, plus two physical, and one any skill. What did I do? Yo, Heathen Dog, you could have raised your strength from a three to a seven. Right here. This is the second out the game has given you to get rid of that minus two. Why didn't you take it? Well, you know what, man? That three is now a point of pride to me. <laughs> I kept that thing through through thick and thin of the first quarter of this character generation, and I'm not letting it go. I'm not fickle like that. I'm keeping it. I'm putting both of those plus twos into decks. You know why? You can't kill it if you can't hit it. <laughs> That's it. And my any skill, here's my out from grunt combat. I took pilot. Mm. I took pilot. So I'm not going to be on the ground fighting hand-to-hand combat, possibly where I'll just get rolled over. I'm going to be in the air, baby. I'm going to be in a place where my, my physical strength does not matter. Look at that. Ha! Yeah. I beat you, Shanghai uh, and sons become... of bitches. I beat you. Uh, I was hoping you would become the black adder of this RPG. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you could do the leadership, and you don't have to become an officer class. You just need a Baldrick. So That's you fair. just need a Patsy right under you. And, I mean, you just you just stand behind them, and it's like you have that buffer. Yeah. And opportunity for comedy. They actually have, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute about, about foci. I'll get that in a second. But uh, so that was my background. All right. This is, this is, this is what I did because they, they conscripted me. They, they trained me up. They trained me to be a pilot. And that's what I did while I was in the military. All right. Now, after that, I got out and now I get to choose my class. I chose expert. All right. Because warrior I got out of being a grunt for a reason. Yeah. I don't want to go back to that. So, uh, I'm a pilot now. I might as well do that, right? And experts get a free bonus focus. We'll get to that in a second. Related to their background. So, I will get a pilot related or... Or I get a pilot or soldier related focus for free. And every expert, their their class special ability is every uh, scene, they get to re-roll one failed roll. To see if they can make it. Mm. So if you get a bad roll, you get a bad roll like I did with strength, like all ones. You get, oh no, I can roll that again. And you can roll it again. And every level that they go up, they get the normal amount of skill points plus one. Other mm. classes don't get that. They get the, We get the plus one. Outstanding. All right, outstanding. So we got my class, got my background. Looking good. What's next? Here's the foci I was talking about. Now, foci are knacks and aptitudes not directly related to to your class or background you doesn't have to be my soldier background or my expert class but it can be i can choose anything all right and everyone gets one for free for character creation you get one for my one i chose star captain all right i chart my own course now damn it <laughs> i'm free they taught me how to pilot a ship after i got out or escaped we'll get we'll get into my backstory later but uh i went and charted my own course, got my own ship, and I'm the captain of, I don't know, a freighter ship, a transport ship, whatever. But that's me, all right? Space bug. There you go. Now, with with this focus, I get a free skill lead. I get the leadership bonus. I get the leadership skill as a bonus. And any ship that I'm the active captain of gets, a, gets bonus command points during combat. Now, I didn't get into ship combat because it's a little more involved than just regular combat. So if you want to play this game, you'll have to do that one. you have to read that one on your own. But don't worry. It's not that complicated. I just didn't have time today to get into it. Now, uh, remember when I said my expert class gives me an extra focus, but it has to be a non-combat focus related somehow to my background. So I chose Starfare. It's related to pilot. I learned how to pilot in my background. 
Starfarer is a navigator. All right. Uh, I get pilot as a bonus skill. Now, I already had pilot, right? I had pilot as a skill. I get it again. It doubles down. I now have it as a level higher than starting. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to get uh, your skill level one as a maximum when you're when you're in character generation. Usually it's only you usually only get skill level zero. You just get it, no bonus when you get the skill. If you get the skill twice, you get skill level one, which means you get a plus one bonus when rolling. Now, not only do I get that, but I automatically automatically succeed at any spike drill related skill checks of difficulty ten or less. Now. Uh, the uh, spike drill is basically initiating an FTL jump. Average difficulty is 6. Hard is 10. Doing a hard FTL jump, I don't even have to roll. I just make it. It just works. That is great because when you screw up a spike drill, you can just blow up. I don't want that. Nobody wants that. I want a record of getting to and from the places I'm paid to get to and from without blowing up. That's what I want. That's how I make money. So I'm a pilot, a captain, and a navigator. I'm a one-man space machine, baby. I can do it all. Wait, I can't repair the ship. Huh. Uh That sucks. Anyway, I guess I'll I'll think about that later. Now, let's look at my equipment. All right. Now you have choices. All right. You can roll your starting money and buy from the list of all the equipment in the game. You get to roll 2d6 times 100. But rolling 200, very scary. 200 bucks gets you nothing. It won't even give you a minor set of armor. It'll get you a pop gun pistol. That's what it'll get you. Or a knife. I don't want to do that. I want to pick from a package. And an equipment package is you have a general idea of what your character's like by now. And they have packages that are set up for your play style. You know, a thief, an assassin, a soldier, a sniper, a technician, a doctor. You know, they have all of those all of those packages set up. And I chose one. I chose the civilian package. You know why? It gives you the most money. You get secure clothing, which is your basic armor. You get a... Uh, communications pad which is you know uh, enterprise beam me up whatever you know whatever and you get 700 credits all right that's better than that's better than an average roll if i'm just rolling money and trying to choose and 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 uh and uh, uh buying items from there an average 2d6 roll is going to be about 600 credits i get two free things and 700 credits i saw that as a deal all day deal all day whatever i don't have i can buy awesome it's great it's gravy now the finishing touches this is where you dot the i's cross t's all that good stuff i get an extra skill all all player characters at at character generation get an extra extra skill at the end i chose fix (gasps) now i'm the perfect spaceman i'm a pilot i'm a navigator I'm a captain. I'm a repairman. I'm a one-man space machine. It's now official. I don't need a crew. I don't need to pay nobody. I'm self-sufficient. As long as I'm in my ship. I step out of my ship, I'm I'm a pile of wet rags, but whatever. So, uh, now I roll my hit points. Now, for the non-warrior or an adventurer that doesn't take this portion of the warrior skill set, you all you get is a 1d6 plus your your constitution modifier every level in hit points. I rolled a five. I lucked out. I rolled a five. Yeah, could have gone the other way, but I it didn't. Now my attack bonus, uh, unless you're a warrior or an adventurer who took that aspect of the warrior as their own, you get one half your level rounded down to your general attack bonus. Well, one half my level rounded down to zero. So there you go, zero. Now saving throws. Again, this is where that three doesn't really matter much anymore again. Because uh, it would, it would, if it was based on my, my physical saving throw, which, which strength is one of them, I would have a physical saving throw of 17 out of 20, which is awful. You have to roll equal or higher to your saving throw to succeed. So, of course, lower 
is better. But this game gives you an out. If you've got one dump stat, like one of your stats is just a dumpster fire like mine. Physical saving throw, you get to choose which stat it's based off of, either strength or con. Well, my con's normal, so I chose con. So my my uh, physical saving throw is 15. Mental, you get to choose charisma or intelligence. Well, my intelligence is plus one, so my mental saving throw is 14. For evasion, you get to choose dex or wisdom. Well, my dex is 18, man. I'm choosing that. Boom, evasion, saving throw, 11. Well, there you go. And here is my character sheet. I will embiggen it for everybody. And my character's name is Jimmy Falco. Jimmy Falco was uh, born on, born and raised on Epsilon 17. He was a farmer, like his father before him, until one day the uh, world government that has been in a protracted war for years with a neighboring planet uh, were running out of soldiers. So they decided to uh, draft some people from Jimmy's town. And uh, they said, Jimmy, you're of fighting age. You're not that big, but we need bodies. So uh, we need you to enlist. He's like, I, and I said, I don't want to. He said, okay, that's fair. That's, that's fair. Uh, if you don't, that's fine. But uh, we're going to kill your parents and your sister. Oh, okay. Then uh, what do I sign? So he signed up. And during his time, he made sure that uh, on the aptitude test, he scored really, really badly in the in the physical part wasn't that hard but he scored really really well in the hand-eye coordination which again wasn't that hard so they trained him up to be a pilot he was a drop ship pilot not the safest kind of pilot mind you he has to fly into enemy zones drop off troops get back up to the main ship in orbit and do it all again as long as the conflict is going uh it's not a safe deal but he did it he did it well until the tide was turning uh, not not tie turning, but you know it. It was in the wind that his side was going to lose. So, right when it was starting to get really hectic, when when his military was falling apart, he stole a ship, got out of there, hid out for about eighteen months, long enough to change change the paint, change the VIN numbers, and he sold that ship. <laughs> And he got himself a job at Parsec Transports. That's right. You need to get your goods. You need to get a dignitary. You need to get your man from one planet to another. Call Parsec Transports. We get you there guaranteed. So he became the captain of a transport ship for Parsec Transports. And he was having a good time. He's having a good time right now. That's Jimmy's backstory. That brings us up to right now. And you can see in his skills, he has fix lead, shoot, and pilot. All right, so uh, fix, lead, and shoot have no bonuses. He just has the skill, so he rolls 2d6. But pilot, oh no. Pilot, he rolls 2d6 plus 1. Now remember, your attribute bonus or detriment come in after this. So for fix, that's intelligence. He gets he gets a 2d6 plus 1 because his intelligence is plus 1. For lead, that's charisma. Eh, he doesn't get a bonus for that. For shoot, that's dex. He gets a plus two. And for pilot, that's dex. He gets a plus three total. That's awesome. He's not he's not failing any rolls anytime soon. That's right. And uh, he doesn't have a gun. Now, you, uh, you recall in his equipment package for civilian, he did not have a gun. Because he's a civilian. He doesn't need a gun. Parsec Transports ah. comes with security. Of course, this is a jumping off point for the game master to get me into trouble or or introduce the rest of the party to my ship and people are attacking them. They they attack my ship because they want to get at them. I get them away. We're hiding and we form a bond. We form a party and, and Parsec Transport says I stole their ship. Well, you know what? I stole one ship. I'll steal this ship too. I repaint it. I, I, I pull an expanse on them and boom, my ship. <laughs> you were really, really close. To just being Captain Mal from yes, Firefly. yes, I am. Just you just need the gun and a little bit more of a gap between the war. Yeah, and you're golden. And you know, not have the strength of a small toddler. Well, I don't know. <laughs> That'll I mean, help. Captain Mal wasn't. Uh, he yeah, wasn't overly really... strong, but he wasn't stupidly weak like I am either. Yeah. So there you go. 
There it is. So that's your character for Star. Oh, oh, thank you very much, Baldahar. Outstanding. Thank you. Tier one. Outstanding. Yeah. He found the button. He did. He found the button. You didn't find the button. So that is Stars Without Number character generation. We've gone through the introduction to the backstory. We've gone through the system, and now we've gone through character generation. If you watch all three of these videos, you will be able to not only understand the game, know where it's coming from, make your character, and play it, you'll like it. Because <laughs> it's a good game. You know, what's not to like? Yeah. It's an excellent game. Yeah, this has been a really good setup. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts about this segment? Did I miss something? I mean, I, I told you I missed, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't miss, but I purposefully did not do uh, space combat. But did I miss something else? Something that should have been... Oh! Here is another one. Who's this? Pax from Erotica! Oh, Pax! Thank you very much! Outstanding! Can you be a Terminator? There is a special foci. It's an alien slash AI foci. That you can choose. It, 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 takes your free, it takes your free slot. You have to burn your free slot. But you can be an AI robot. You can and that comes with perks. You get automatic armor. That's really good. Not like secure clothing like I have. No, actually really good automatic armor. And you get multitasking and you get eidetic memory and all that stuff for free. Because it's all, they're all, all the skills are built into your, into your foci that's AI. So yes, you can. You can be Bender if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can be. <laughs> Do it. So uh, what are your thoughts on character generation? I mean... Do you think it's easy? Do you think it's hard? Duncan, what uh, what do you think? Was that easily followable? This was, yeah, this was really easily followable. Yeah. I mean, just uh, just from starting off, point your skills, your set, everything was very intuitive, followed one to another, and you're winnowing down to create a character, so you have a really good feel of who you are by the end of this. So I really like this starting process. What I liked about it is uh, I decided to keep that three. The game gave me two outs yeah. to get rid of that three. Two outs! Of course, I didn't take it because, you know, whatever. I want the three, but you know, the the game is forgiving. It is forgiving, but I want you to understand. Just like I said during during my uh, my treatise on the system, the reason that the stat bonuses and detriments are so low is because these low stats and high stats are supposed to be for flavor. They're not supposed to be hugely impactful on gameplay, and that's exactly how they play out. All right, so do you have any suggestions for my next tabletop RPG? I'd love to hear it. Stars Without Number was actually a, a suggestion, so give me another one, and I'd love it. Star Trek Adventures. Star Trek Adventures? That's a, that's a tabletop? Yeah, that's tabletop. That's what the devs have played when they've done the Pathfinder Adventures and the um, Sally Ride, um, Shield of Tomorrow. Um, oh, it's RPG. a Pathfinder-based game? Uh, no, that's actually what um, Sir Brolevard and his company named their ship. Oh, so it's okay. it's uh, it's by Morpheus. So I don't know what it's conceptually most similar to, but I've seen it played in three different settings, and people have had a lot of fun with it. Um, and it's one of the creative projects a group of ex-foundry authors have gotten up to. So okay, cool. Well, we've got that, and we've got uh, Symbarum from Sheris and Sketch. I never heard of Sketch from Hippie John. I don't know if that's a that real thing. That might just be me, me drawing more tardigrades. Oh, it could be just you drawing more tardigrades. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want more Heathen Dog, you can check out YouTube. You can go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see all of my past, all of my past segments, uh, anime and RPGs. And, uh, of course, we have members-only chat and giveaway if you decide to become a YouTube member. And it counts toward our Patreon goals so we can activate the all-platform prizes. So that's what we want. Right? So... Go ahead and do that. And remember, be a legionnaire.